Coastlines are shaped by the effects of water, winds, sediment, vegetation, and wildlife, and now more than ever human alterations. Coastal engineering and coastal geomorphology focus on understanding these processes and designing to accommodate them. My name is Jessica Wilson, and I'm a coastal engineer at Northwest Hydraulic Consultants on Vancouver Island. I grew up as part of a beachcombing family in a remote coastal community along the BC coast, where I spent almost all of my time in and around the water. Despite having grown up on the coast, when I first went to university, I had never even heard of coastal engineering. But after a series of lucky encounters, I landed a part-time position as a numerical modeling assistant, where I began modeling tidal currents and waves in various regions in BC. This was the beginning of a journey exploring and learning about coastal engineering. Later, as part of my master's degree, I studied how gravel beaches are shaped by waves and how implementing various structures can change those interactions. The first project I was ever involved in was a beach nourishment project for a nonprofit in Todd Inlet on the Saanich Peninsula. The beach was designed to improve both recreational and ecological values of the shoreline. It was also designed to be raised in phases over many years in order to match the rate of sea level rise. And for me personally, the project introduced the idea that beaches could be designed by people to meet specific needs and not just formed by nature. Since then, I've worked on numerous beach nourishment projects and many natural or dynamic shoreline designs across Vancouver Island and BC in general. Traditionally, however, when engineers were designing shoreline projects, there was a tendency to want the shoreline to stay very static, despite the fact that it exists in the midst of a very dynamic environment. As humans, we often expect the shoreline that has been in one state for the last 20 years to remain that way for the next 20. We build breakwaters, seawalls, and revetments to try and force it this way. And the natural system fights against this. It wants change and it often undermines these imposed static conditions. In many cases, this conflict between the static structures and the natural environment results in increased wave-induced flooding, unexpected erosion, and habitat degradation. As an alternative to these type of static hard structures, many coastal engineers have been moving towards the application of nature-based techniques. These types of approaches aim to support both environmental and human needs by mimicking processes and materials found in the local natural environment. Nature-based techniques aim to allow sediment to move across the shore and along the shore. They connect the upland area to the foreshore, create locally appropriate habitat, and adapt dynamically to winds, waves, and currents that pass over it. These types of designs often include things like gravel or sand beaches, rocky headlands, and plantings of native vegetation. And I'll now pass off to my colleague, Grant Lamont. My name is Grant Lamont, and I am a coastal engineer and principal at Northwest Hydraulic Consultants. I first started working as a coastal engineer while in Ottawa at the National Research Council. The photo on top shows where I first worked. I was privileged early in my career to work on a number of physical model studies. Physical models are great tools for examining how coastal structures respond to storms and to this day continue to be a key tool for design. And it's a lot of fun playing in a wave basin with models, I have to say. Today though, computer simulations are increasingly used as computer technology has improved. Wave models, such as those shown below, are used by NHC to evaluate detailed shoreline designs and wave structure interactions. It's always critical that any analysis tool, whether a desktop calculation or a fancy computer simulation, is calibrated and checked. There are no shortcuts here to quality work. One of the most exciting developments, though, today in coastal engineering is the increasing recognition of the importance of a multidisciplinary approach. Unfortunately, in the early days of coastal engineering, Many projects went forward in which the design did not account for shoreline habitat value and the ecological setting. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we are really lucky. We have an amazing biodiversity in our intertidal zone, and it's important that we recognize this. 
I'm glad to see that it is increasingly common that projects move forward with a multidisciplinary design team where engineers are working closely with marine biologists and specialists in shoreline ecology, as well as landscape architects and planners. NHC is seeing an increased number of projects focused on enhancing salmon habitat here in BC. Such projects include restoration of salt marsh and restoring aquatic connectivity. Detailed field monitoring, such as in the photos that you see, and hydrodynamic modeling to examine water quality parameters are key aspects of this work. These are really important projects given the past degradation to salmon habitat in many of our coastal estuaries. Shown also on this slide are the four Greenshores principles. I feel these Greenshores principles are always worth considering on any project, regardless of whether it's to enhance salmon habitat or just to protect against erosion. Returning now to that photo of a seawall shown on an earlier slide. Above, you can see the seawall and below you can see an image of a recently completed project. We work to develop a more natural shoreline that provides protection from storms and increases the habitat and recreational value of the shoreline. Such projects have numerous challenges for the design team. This is particularly true on high energy shorelines where there's a lot of wave energy and for those project sites that are adjacent to seawalls. It's my experience that each site is unique and there's no one size fits all solution to our shorelines. And this keeps the projects fun as you have to be creative. Each site needs a careful analysis of the incident wave conditions, tides, and sediment dynamics. In closing, I just want to say this is a privilege to be working in the field of coastal engineering. There are lots of talented people across disciplines who are increasingly committed to improving shoreline design. Everyone enjoys natural beaches. This slide has a picture of one of my favorite beaches on the west coast of Vancouver Island. This seems to be a sort of a universal appreciation across cultures and around the world. Recognition of the incredible habitat diversity that exists along shorelines is key for projects today. Sea level rise is going to bring additional stresses into our shorelines in the future, and it will require collaboration of professionals across disciplines to work together to protect our shorelines going forward.